Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Khalid Muhammad Arif from Sekita Sunnah Jusniya Burhan. Malaysia. Thank you YouTube. Thank you all uh, subscribers and viewers of uh, this channel. I am uh, honored to be able to share this knowledge and this experience with you. Uh, before we go on, I would like to implore all my Muslim uh, brothers and sisters, please do not watch this video if you are already in a mosque attending the Friday prayer for the men and also uh, religious lessons. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Now, in this video, we are going to look into uh, uh, an important uh, air pollution, environmental air pollution control equipment, which is now becoming popular. Uh, in this part of the world where I'm from, whereby uh, uh, this uh, increasing number of uh, uh, coal-fired power plants since the past uh, 10 years or so. So the use of uh, uh, the, the coal-fired power plant, as you know, burns uh, bituminous, sub bituminous coal uh, going through Russia pulverizes and thereby uh, burnt in the boiler furnace and releases um, fine dust particles and uh, apparently uh, the most uh, efficient technique of uh, air pollution control or air filtration for that matter is uh, the dust uh, filter back dust collector or and also uh, electrostatic uh, precipitator. And uh, electrostatic precipitator could be the wet type and also the dry type. Uh, I'll be uh, uh, explaining perhaps in environmental management terms the dry type of electrostatic precipitator. All right, um, again, experts, safety health officers, industrial hygienist, uh, fellow consultants, trainers all over the world, wherever you are, you may have a better uh, experience uh, in this uh, particular equipment than me. Please then add up to the comments below so that uh, other people who might not be able to attend to hear your explanation face to face because of perhaps the distant uh, and also due to this uh, pandemic, I uh, would still be able to hear from you through this uh, comment uh, as you are able to perhaps uh, kind enough to uh, state it down below. So let's take a look at the equipment. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, this is a, uh, the earlier version of electrostatic precipitator. And uh, I also display some form. Well, I selected only three types of environmental aspects uh, that we could discuss uh, by virtue of understanding environmental management system ISO 14001. Now let's take a look at the link, okay? Safety, health, and environment, how are they linked uh, when we are managing, we are operating this particular equipment. Now let's take a look at the first environmental aspect here. Um, okay, uh, let's take blue. <laughs> okay, uh, the first environmental aspect here is electrostatic precipitator ash. Okay, and um, this is the ash that comes out of the ESP. Those that comes in would be the uh, probably boiler ash or perhaps bottom ash that would come in into the ESP from the uh, combustion in the from the combustion in the boiler furnace. Now, once it has uh, uh, passes through. Uh, ESP that it will become ESP ash as output and these are uh, of course
costs considerably fine dust. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, there is a concern in safety here. And uh, of course, some of it is still having some calorific value. In other words, it is still containing volatile organic compounds, combustible. And the fact that in terms of safety, this particular equipment is operating at high voltage. Now, apparently, uh, what is made known to me through my use of audit, apparently this uh, equipment traps a dust using electrostatic Forces. There is a corona discharge. When the dust particle gets into the system, it is charged. All right, and the plates are charged of, uh, in the oppos opposite manner. So those uh, dust will be collected at some uh, uh, vertical and perhaps uh, parallel plates arranged in this ESP. And when the dust is uh, full or accumulated substantially the voltage, the potential difference in this particular equipment will be turned off and there is an equipment called wrapper that would actually knock those plates so that it is able to uh, loosen all the dust from the plates and the plates gets collected at the bottom of uh, this particular ESP and that is called ESP dust okay now that higher voltage apparently uh, uh, from my understanding uh, and this is quite consistently being uh, uh, told to me during all the audits these plates has got certain arrangements certain morphology certain shape and good plates is where the end of the plate is actually rounded or you know baffled uh, to ensure that uh, there's a minimized uh, occurrence of micro sparks so called because sparks do sparks do uh, uh, exist in this uh, particular operation of this equipment from time to time and uh, that is rather inevitable as far as I'm told. So uh, that being in that sort of, uh, the equipment is operating in that sort of uh, condition, render it a uh, 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 hazardous, a potential hazard. And, 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 and for example, when uh, the boiler uh, malfunction, and there is a carryover of perhaps uh, uh, volatile organics, all right? And that is a, a situation when it can cause explosion, actually. And that explosion occur uh, because the, when the boiler malfunction, it is inducing or permitting the carryover of uh, volatile gases into the system or even heavy carbon uh, enter the system and uh, that could cause explosion when there is spark. Now that is another potential hazard and of course the entry of volatile gases, volatile organic compounds, carbons, okay, and that is another uh, existing it's, it's a combination, all right, and it's an existing potential hazard. And some of these dust are so fine because electrostatic precipitator is known to be able to trap 99% of dust of uh, smaller uh, dust uh, sizes and uh, could even trap something well below one micron. Uh, below 10 microns, that's what has been told to me, uh, based on design, but it is uh, susceptible to other variable factors. So those are safety concerns. Those are potential hazards in the operation of this particular equipment. Look, if you're operating uh, this particular equipment, you know better, much better than I do, 
please add in in the in the comment column below share your experience perhaps okay and uh, that would be affecting health in the sense that people can get injured okay and of course there's uh, fatality and uh, yes there is one more uh, risk here which is ozone intoxication that could be affecting worker because uh, when never the electrode uh, the electrode, the discharge electrode of BCSP is energized, mean charged. Uh, it uh, 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 literally create ozone in that ambience around the electrode, and that can cause uh, people working in this area to be intoxicated with ozone, and that is another potential risk. Now, this is affecting when people are affected. It can cause injury, it can cause fatality, it can cause medical attention, and that would lead to associated uh, generation of uh, perhaps medical waste and all other uh, materials used in medical rescue, and that would become uh, what we know as uh, medical waste, uh, or in Malaysia, it is scheduled waste under SW what 403, uh, discarded drugs and all this, and that is uh, has that is actually uh, waste which would be brought over to uh, the uh, medical incineration plant and be incinerated, thus generating air impurities which causes air pollution and residues from them would be sent to secure landfill, thus causing soil contamination or ground contamination or even groundwater contamination. Now, the ESP ash uh, or this activity as a whole would pose uh, health issues. Has already been discussed. Uh, let us go vice versa. Uh, the, for example, the ESP ash can cause health, and people can have some uh, uh, respiratory-related diseases, or initially perhaps discomfort. Okay, and plus the ozonation uh, that would actually cause health problem and when he is not working in a good health condition thereby rendering uh, uh, compromise of safety procedures that would invite uh, that would make uh, the place that he is working uh, vulnerable to perhaps uh, potential hazard and it might cause explosion, fire, etc. And that that uh, uh, sort of, uh, for example, excessive you know, uh, volatile organics and leading to explosion that would cause an impact to the environment because uh, there's a lot of damage and environmental other associated environmental aspects might be generated thereby causing much severe environmental impact now let's take a look at the environmental management next all right let's uh, take a look at my favorite part now environmental management system remember the ISO 14001 states that environmental management system is about managing environmental aspects by virtue of full feeling compliance obligation and addressing risk and opportunity and that happened we have perhaps choices of what we want to achieve which is called our intended outcome and from there once we have laid out what we want to achieve so-called intended outcome from our environmental management system the steering committee the top management has got to decide has got to promulgate uh, steps measures 
probably objective and then followed by uh, detailed uh, steps, measures called program. In view of achieving, not just documented on paper, but uh, by virtue of achieving, targeted to achieve what is being planned. That is called a planning actions to achieve those intended outcomes. That is an environmental management system ISO 14001 version 2015. Okay, let's take a look at the first environmental aspect uh, that we would discuss in this particular video. Um, okay, now, I only choose uh, three environmental aspects assuming we have done the input output analysis before this now if you if you need it i will make uh, uh, specific videos on input output analysis to help you or otherwise i would uh, project what is called uh, aspects impact register after this if you if you if you if you want it all right just leave your comment below and i'll try to work it out for you this is in view of many of our friends today uh, while this video is underway uh, can't attend face-to-face -face training due to all these restrictions of movement and even though we might get vaccinated there will be skepticism about this virus and we do not know so i decided not to wait and see and produce this video in hoping that all of us would benefit from it in one or other way okay so let's talk about the sp ash which is the output from this particular equipment air pollution control equipment called electrostatic precipitator as an output aspect take a look okay it is an output aspect remember what is environmental aspect the standard says part of the management i would put it this way anything that interacts or can interact with the environment so in this case if it is an output aspect we've got to look at the downstream of its life cycle so that that would facilitate facilitate us in uh, writing up its operational procedures okay in uh, the management system uh, we need to look at these environmental aspects in order to write uh, specifically uh, how to manage it okay the operational control when we write operational control in managing this aspect we need to know its life cycle perspective so since this is an output so we've got to look at the downstream of its life cycle perspective in other words what happened to it next now the esp ash usually will be sent to what is called the ash pond all right and that would definitely cause some form of uh, uh, contamination of the bottom of the pond if it is not lined then it will be causing some form of soil contamination and as you know some of this uh, ESP ash when we sent for analysis there are some substantial amount of even mercury you know and uh, yeah because the, the boiler of furnace is not operating in the region of 900 to 1000 c we could still see a lot of heavy, heavy metals uh, when we took samples uh, and uh, that would also uh, from the ash pond uh, where settling occur and the uh, cleared water would be discharged into waterways into inland water and that would cause some form of water pollution and so on ecologists i think you would understand uh, what would happen when we are adding all these pollutants, although it has passed the standard, the flow rate uh, into the uh, rivers, uh, into the ditches is higher, into the rivers is higher, into the river mouth is higher. 
uh, it is evidence of uh, imbalanced hydrological cycle there isn't it the water cycle is being imbalanced because there's a new entry from from all these facilities think about it of course it might be changing many many types of many uh, small small uh, lower tropics of uh, uh, ecological cycles okay then ecologists please say something and another uh, uh, environmental aspect that we chose is the uh, ESP electrode itself, the discharge electrode, okay, and it has been charged. And uh, the ESP electrode is changed uh, when it is uh, kaput, and uh, uh, it is an environmental aspect. Why? Because it is interacting with the environment. How does it do that? Now, as an input aspect, we are viewing the ESP electrode from its upstream life cycle. Meaning, uh, where does the uh, what you call uh, ESP electrode uh, come from? As far as I know, it is made of a, um, what do you call it um, graphite. And in order, it, it, there are two types that I, I, I came across. One is uh, the naturally occurring graphite. And another one is the artificial type of graphite made from uh, petrochemical, uh, what do you call it, uh, products, uh, pitches, pitch, pitch, and even coal. Uh, and in, uh, with the mixture of acetylene, I'm not sure it could be uh, it could be some uh, combustion going on uh, to make artificial graphite. But the one that we're discussing is the uh, what you call naturally occurring graphite, which comes from mining, mining of the earth structure, usually. Uh, the rock structure, which is embedded with uh, uh, all sorts of uh, fossil fuel. So this sort of uh, uh, rocks uh, that is being mined could be the, what you call it, the metaphoris, uh, the meta, sorry, metamorph metamorphic, metamorphic rocks, yeah, uh, igneous rocks, okay, uh, and a few other types of rocks which which we can find graphite and other rocks but not just samba etc okay so it's about rock and uh, this uh, rocks uh, contains graphite and the more demand for graphite means the more exploration and exploitation of all this earth rock structure thereby the resources containing all these materials gets less and less and less over time and that is causing resource depletion and that the structure has been tampered, has been built with facilities, with, uh, yeah, uh, you can say facilities, equipment in order to mine for this uh, particular rock that is putting those rock structure in a state of permanent damage okay and uh, that is why we have got to find ways that we, we we are able to manage this particular environmental aspect in a manner that we could retard we can't eliminate but we could retard or slow down the the speed of resource depletion and geological damage. Now, another environmental aspect of our concern, at least we have chosen for this particular discussion, is the electrostatic precipitator collection plates, uh, where the corona discharge is, and uh, these plates are being charged with uh, the opposite uh, charges as compared to the dust which is being charged and another uh, opposite charge one could be negative one could be positive so that when there's high potential difference 
the uh, charged particles will look for the plates and the plates will collect all these particles will be accumulated over the plates for some time and uh, once the uh, what you call uh, plates is full then the, the, the charges will be the potential difference will be off and the wrapper will come in and knock over the plates and thus would fall somehow due to the spark um, what they call it uh, uh, sometimes the flow of gas what comes into the ESP is now an issue that causes the plate to be corroded or kaput early than designed or perhaps it is a norm now sometimes the uh, the flow the inflow of uh, waste streams or the dust or perhaps volatile organic compounds uh, that flow in at certain temperature uh, is supposed to be maintained at certain temperature but when the flow is cooler the temperature drops and when the temperature drops uh, below the uh, what they call it a uh, dew point moisture dew point or acid correct me if I'm wrong all right acid dew point then you may have uh, some form of moisture uh, in the system that would make the dust tick instead of just electrostatic bonded to the plates it becomes stick it gets stick to a plate just like uh, some dust uh, would stick to some surfaces when it's moist that would not drop when the wrapper tap the plates and you know and that would maybe okay cause uh, a misalignment uh, and uh, you know and uh, uh, electrode wire might misalign and causes more sparks and also eventually that spark would corrode with all these combinations of a uh, situation would corrode the place and we got to change the place simple as that okay uh, it's not easy to maintain this electrostatic precipitator it's got to be maintained in the mint precise engineering the operators has got to <laughs> have high discipline so the plates are input aspect now how to manage this plate then we have to know its life cycle uh, perspective of these plates we've got to look upstream now this is talking about new plates see the more demand for uh, what they call it the new plates and uh, most of these plates are made from carbon steel what is carbon steel is a com look metallurgist help me out if I'm wrong carbon steel carbon steel is a combination of iron and carbon and the carbon part of this carbon steel is actually from coal here we are discussing coal-fired power plants see the demand of coal is uh, very high and occasionally uh, sometimes you have uh, other uh, small less than one percent composition of probably minerals in the carbon steel in the carbon because it is in the carbon form it can have magnets maybe one percent or perhaps uh, 0 0.5 0 0.6 or seven percent of uh, a silicon okay and perhaps uh, some percentage of copper that constitute uh, this uh, what we call it carbon steel and the more demand for carbon steel it means that the more demand for resources and thereby Im imposing what environmental impact known as resource depletion and also mining that would distort damage interrupt with the geological structures so we have got to draw uh, before we look at the risk and opportunities at this point when we are drawing the uh, operational control 
of this electrostatic precipitator when those SOP involves all these environmental aspects, we know, we have in the back of our mind their respective life cycle so that we are able to draw a precise a representative uh, SOPs uh, that would conjure to, uh, that would lead to a proper management a proper environmental management of this activity in ensuring these aspects is prevented or eliminated from causing their respective associated probable environmental impact. Okay, so I believe uh, that's good. Now let's take a look at risk. Now there are some risks in this operation. One of them being legal liability in this country where I'm from. Uh, the, the legal liability is associated to schedule risk management. And uh, the, uh, well, there's, a, there's a number of schedule risks uh, from the uh, hydraulic oil, lube oil, and all this up to all this uh, fly ash, bottom ash. These are all classified as schedule risks. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, we got to be uh, you know managed in a close look manner. And all these are liability, and this, especially the fly ash, bottom ash, okay, ESP ash, all right, pond ash. There's so many ashes here fly ash, bottom ash, ESP ash, pond ash, ash pond, other than. Rick Ashley, <laughs> so all these are risk, uh, uh, you know, and uh, and we have got to. Uh, it is costly to manage actually. Uh, we, if we could, we, we, my part, the way I look at it here, opportunity. Knowing all this risk, try to look for opportunity, any available opportunity that we can capitalized to ensure the sustainability of uh, our resources and sustainability of our uh, businesses. In this case, uh, electrostatic precipitator for the coal-fired power plant. The company that owns this uh, coal-fired power plant got to look into business sustainability. And I hope they don't have to wait for politicians. Polit politicians is only interested when they have uh, some sort of uh, interest uh, in this. And uh, we got to help them make decisions, all right? And they've got some of the things that they got to think about in the policies. But people like us, we got to uh, enlighten. We got to update politicians of what is needed and what are the business opportunity. You know, this is a, a, a capitalist economy, so we are we are in the system, so we got to work it out the way we could. All right, now, opportunity is, for me, look, what we do is these ESP and bottom ash convert it into product. Do you see that? Now. For, for for ESP and bottom mesh, this is a success success story for some companies. They have blended with clinker in the production of cement. Clinker substitute. It's not said in the journal by a digger. Okay and. Uh, Think about it. If if you are the coal fired power plant in this country, in Malaysia, these are all opportunities. Universities, be honest with your finding and get back to this. Uh, I learned that some universities came to these uh, coal fired power plants, took samples, and be quiet with it. Now, come on, you got to communicate with the origin of the sample, these uh, coal fired power plant. You got to communicate and tell them what you find. 
and you can ask for grants for, from them if you need to so that with this grant you can pursue with your researches so that we are able to get somewhere you know uh, you, you need to have a few brains to think and develop something but if you are quiet you know you took sample then you're quiet you don't even mention to the uh, no feedback to these uh, coal fired power plant management and their staff then you're not getting anywhere okay so they, they could be at a high level perhaps you know never mind i'm not involved i'm a nobody to be involved there. so i believe this is uh, the best i could do for uh, discussing uh, relations between safety health and environment and uh, focusing into environmental management system iso 14001 version 2015 and i hope it is vivid for your uh, for your uh, what they call uh, undertakings, all right? So thank you very much for your time. Uh, YouTube, appreciate your effort, appreciate what you have done for the internet, especially in this case, uh, education, all right? Through YouTube, uh, I'm honored to be part of it. So I wish everybody in Bahasa Melayu semoga dikurniakan kesenangan, keselamatan, kesejahteraan, kebahagiaan dan kejayaan kehidupan di dunia dan di akhirat. And I wish everybody, whoever you are, whatever you are, what age have you, what faith have you, regardless, this particular wish before we meet again in the next video, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.